The sun sets over the popular Jabi Lake in Abuja. Sometimes the ensuing darkness is unnerving. Nigeria has seen tough times, dark and uncertain. All we need is one man. Yet when the people's fortune changes, then despair turns to hope and dreams to reality. We now want to very diligently and most respectfully request the President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Muhammadu Buhari, Grand Commander of the Order of the Federal Republic, to please present the inaugural speech, Mr. President. Thus, the journey began. For many that gathered at the popular Eagle Square in Abuja, this is the day the country turned a curve. The wind of change will be felt by all. The kind of change envisaged by the government in 2015 was one where the reforms would trickle from top to bottom. While the people would ultimately become the main beneficiaries, it became imperative for the government to reform and improve public institutions in order to fast-track deliverables in three major areas. They include fighting corruption, reviving and diversifying the economy, and improving security in the country. To a large extent, the anti-corruption poise of the APC-led administration was the main driver of the government's change agenda. The nation had for decades grappled with endemic corruption, which unfortunately had eaten deep into the fabric of society. We made a startling revelation that between 2006 and 2013, that just 55 individuals allegedly embezzled a whopping sum of 1.34 trillion naira. We went further to illustrate how much that would have meant if it was not stolen. Because we used World Bank rates and costs to arrive at the conclusion that if only one third of that allegedly embezzled funds was returned to have built us 20,000 housing units, 615 kilometers of dual, of, 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 of dual carriageway, to have provided us one first class hospital in the east of the Federation. We have built us 183 schools, and in addition, we have been able to train from primary one to university level 4,000 Nigerians. There was therefore the compulsion on government to turn the tide. The anti corruption crusade of the Buhari administration was mostly based on curtailing corrupt practices, making probity and accountability in governance the norm. Giving the tools to prosecute the war in tandem with the disposition of President Muhammadu Buhari, the anti-graft agencies made significant strides. For instance, in 2016 alone, the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission, ICPC, received a total of 1,569 petitions against government agencies and some private sector actors. Over 8.7 billion naira was recovered by the ICPC in the same year. At the time, the commission had filed more than 70 corrupt cases, secured 11 convictions, and had over 303 pending cases. Like a true life movie, the whistleblower policy was one of the new interventions by government to help clean up the system. Under the policy, the government recovered $151 million and $8 billion naira looted funds from three sources, with the biggest amounts being $136.7 million 
recovered from an account in a commercial bank under a fake name. Only an uncharitable person would deny that there's a higher level of anti-corruption out there. Clearly under President Buhari, there's a different mood, you know, and attitude to corruption. In the previous regimes, corruption was virtually celebrated. Nobody looked this way or that. Uh, but under this dispensation, everybody knows. I mean, opinion will be divided as to the level of success. But certainly, some things are happening and they are positive. Every single Nigerian has a responsibility to fight corruption. There is a need for Nigerians to take ownership of the fight against corruption. We should not leave it at the mercy of the anti corruption. The more we mobilize every Nigerian to join in the fight against corruption, it will be very difficult for them. There will be no hiding place for the corrupt. Prosecuting corruption cases has been quite challenging for the authorities who have remained dogged. The administration evolved workable strategies to fast track prosecution and avoid delayed justice. Under this admission, there is an institution of a national co a prosecution coordinating unit in which all the uh, the all the uh, the units come together. The ICPC, EFCC, we rub mind together, we discuss all the cases and see how they can effectively. Uh, be prosecuted and what you're looking at also we also have to think uh, that this ministry of justice under the this present administration has been very pivotal in the recovery by doing this one whether you recover you will be able to recover 322 million dollars which was in the public domain and even the 73 million that we the which we also recovered it is through the instrumentality of this ministry of justice Beyond prosecution, the government is faced with the challenge of instilling a culture of honesty and dignity in labor. Public apathy for corrupt practices in Nigeria is rife. This is as a result of years of looting which crippled human and infrastructural development in the country. Reforming the system meant rejigging public institutions like the civil service. The Treasury single account, a cash planning and management too, was introduced to plug leakages and cop looting of public funds. So far, over 4 trillion naira of government funds have been saved, mostly recovered from dormant accounts in deposit money banks. Another angle to it was the discovery of 50,000 ghost workers on government's payroll who were subsequently flushed out of the public service. Plugging loopholes and leakages in public spending became quite important for the Buhari government from the onset of the administration. By 2015, when President Buhari came to power, global oil prices had plummeted. Unfortunately, Nigeria's national and foreign reserves were almost at rock bottom, an economic recession inevitable. It takes courage, it takes commitment, it takes sacrifice for any government to manage this kind of shock. And that's exactly what we've been doing. Tackling the challenge required proper analysis, followed through by policy formulation and actions deliberately targeted to kickstart, restore and grow the economy. The Economic Recovery and Growth Plan was launched by President Mohamed Buhari in 2017 and charted a course for an integrated approach to grow the economy over a four-year period. The plan fused together identified priority areas that would engender Nigeria's growth into a globally competitive economy. The reason why it is important to build a globally competitive economy is that we must make Nigeria a productive place. Production in agriculture, production in manufacturing, production in services. Some actions subsequently taken to stabilize the macroeconomy environment were shaped by monetary policies, which grew market confidence and encouraged local production. Under the Buhari administration, agriculture became a big deal and serious business. The renewed drive to boost commercial agriculture in Nigeria was compelled by the urge to meet new food targets. 
Some of the significant steps taken by the government over the last couple of years include creating access to modern farming implements, educating farmers on enhanced agricultural techniques, and attracting big players into value addition for targeted crops. This has mostly manifested in rice production. From the onset, the president liaised with key players in the rice value chain process. Why the issue of standardized seedlings was addressed, the Akulian tax of credits was creatively resolved. The CBN Anchor Burrows program was launched as an incentive particularly for the small older farmer. The program complements the Growth Enhancement Support Scheme of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture by graduating the small older farmer into commercial agriculture. It addresses all those challenges along the valley and it also brought knowledge because you know the farmers we are used to subsistent uh, kind of farming but now they are trained on best practices because before the credit is administered their biometric is taken and basic data they are, they are mapped to farm and then we want to be sure that they are the owner of the farm then aside from that we now have the hanko who will now work with them who will provide extension services we now have the insurance we have the financial institutions so that all those challenges that have been imparting that have been a debilitating factor to the growth of agricultural sector in the country has been addressed. And that's why we are now seeing huge improvement in productivity. It is now called the white gold revolution and for good reasons. There is clearly an increasing number of big players in the sector at the cultivation level. There is also the geometric leap in the number of small older rice farmers in the country from 5 million in 2015 to a registered 12.2 million in 2018. Rice farming, not only meal, it has changed IMM people because I have uh, three graduates now and one undergraduate because of this rice farming. It gives us money. I have been in a rice business, farming in particular, uh, close to 40 years, 38 years in the business. And I'll tell you, the smallholder farmer in Nigeria has never had it so good. The gains registered rather visibly with increasing activities along the value chain. There are over 27 large-scale rice mills and 5,000 small mills currently processing rice across the country at international standard. We have reduced the quantity of rice coming in through our pots by 95%, which amounts to a saving of about $5 million a day. And all this happened between uh, December 2015 and now. For the first time in over four decades, putting a complete stop to rice importation is closer rather than a mirage. If you can see enough of the Nigerian rice, we prefer it to the, the foreign one that they bring. So Nigeria, Nigeria rice is the most beautiful rice when one can talk about. It's natural, one. The protein in it is natural. Whatever it is, is natural. So, and if you go to the market, you see Nigeria rice. I like Nigeria rice so much because it's my country, and anything made for my country, I think I should, I should have that passion for it. And also, by so doing that, I think I'm encouraging those people that are producing it. Improving the country's transportation infrastructure is another priority objective of the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. The return of the rail, as many have tacked it, is considered a major achievement by the Buhari administration. The modern rail service kicked off under the Buhari administration with the commissioning of the Abuja Light Rail. The 290 km stretch rail line cuts across six lots and already gives the city an additional aura of modernity. 
Attempts to reconnect major cities of the country also gave birth to the completion and commissioning of the Abuja Kaduna rail line in 2016. It is one of the first standard gauge railway modernization projects in Nigeria, gopping a total of $1.457 billion. This line is definitely one of the most frequently used in the country and now makes movements of people from Abuja to the commercial city of Kaduna easier and quicker. It's okay. It's nice, it's fine. At least we like it. Shortcut from Abuja to Kaduna. So I think it's one of our dreams in Nigeria. Apparently, the ongoing investment in rail infrastructure is creating jobs for thousands of young people across the country. More people are likely to get engaged as new rail lines are constructed while businesses have options to move their goods. In fact, when we buy something on our way coming back, we find out that the train doesn't accommodate a game. There are more people coming in to join the train. Even this morning, you see that more people are coming in to join the train. And the transporters there are complaining that because people are leaving them to join the train. By the time you finish the Lagos Ibadan, the volume of, uh, I'm, I'm hearing that they should be able, they actually told that you should be able to move 3 million tons of cargo per, per year. I, I, again, with the data I just got, the, 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 if you would construct the Lagos Kano Railway, rail line, you should be able to move 30 million tons of freight per year. So you can imagine the volume of business you're doing. You can imagine the volume of, uh, the number of persons that or companies that you have helped to move their, move their uh, freight. That's, that will be the focus. But that doesn't mean we'll undermine the passenger element of it because we we'll also have to move people from Port Harcourt to Kano, those who can use buses or taxis or flights. Um, we'll make, they will make the freight, uh, I mean, we'll make the rail, rail infrastructure comfortable for both the rich and the poor. In spite of the perennial challenges associated with the power sector, the Buhari administration has creditably acquitted itself in power supply. Since 2015, the administration has been working on 90 transmission projects across the country. Some of these projects have begun to bear fruit. Nigeria witnessed electricity generation at its peak at about 5,233 megawatts under the Buhari administration. Major markets like Sora, Ariari and 14 others are currently benefiting from a combination of solar and wind initiatives. Though several challenges still remain in the transmission and distribution subsector, agreements were reached with international partners and agencies to improve capacity and upgrade power training facilities in Nigeria. Government's mission is to pursue a minimum 1,000 megawatts incremental power capacity on the grid each year till 2023. We are in a place where we are making progress, we are not stagnant. And I say to people, you just ask yourself over the last one year what your experience has been. Are you running your generator for fewer hours or for longer hours? Are you paying more for fewer? to fuel your generator or you are buying less, less fuel. The numbers show that things have improved along those lines. So that means we're saving you some money. We know that there are issues about metry. We know that there are issues about customer service. But those are last mile issues and we're also working to address them. Massive investments in infrastructure by the Buhari administration not only ended the economic recession which Nigeria slided into in 2016, but largely improved the living conditions of Nigerians. Hello, Nigerians. Today is idea of... The government of President Muhammad Buhari is all about striking a balance. Human development equals infrastructure improvement. Poverty reduction is a deliberate policy under the current administration. The government's social investment program, SIP, launched May 29, 2016, is described as very ambitious and has been realistic in catering to the needs of the most vulnerable in Nigeria. Government has spent 300 billion naira so far 
with a total of 11.5 million people benefiting directly from the scheme. The conditional cash transfer has over 300,000 poor households getting 5,000 naira per month. 1.6 million petty traders, market women and farmers get six months ten on interest free loans of 10,000 naira growing all the way to 100,000 naira. My own money is I'm going to add it to the business. It's going to help, I'm going to have more sales into it. So I hear about the, the treasure money. So I come here to come and collect the money to start my own business so that it will grow up. I'm selling much. And I want to add the capital to make the, uh, the thing uh, big like that. Another component of the SIP, the NPAR, is described as one of the most single successful recruitment drive in Nigeria's history. And there is the homegrown school feeding program. I think all of the programs have impacted uh, the most on the population. Uh, if you take the school feeding program, for example, where we're feeding 9.3 million children across 49,000 public primary schools in 26 states in this country, the humongous impact, the value chain that is added as a result of that, because we're not only feeding these children, we're feeding them through about 100,000 cooks who are basically rural women who had heather to no jobs to do, who now have a source of income. And then these 100,000 cooks buy their food stuff, which is homegrown, from local farmers that were heather to into subsistence farming, who are now into some sort of semi-commercial farming. And then we have aggregators of poultry farmers in different states, and we have industries of, of, of small snacks that are being revived as a result of the market chain that this feeding program has created. In other words, you have, we have created an agricultural revolution from the bottom up as a result of the school feeding. So, for example, if we feed a child an egg a day, and you feed an, an, an egg a week, for example, and you feed 9.3 million kids. You're talking about 9.3 million eggs every week. To get 9.3 million eggs every week, you need at least 3,000 poultry farms that, have, that has at least 1,000 chickens that could lay at least three fertilizer eggs in a week. Can you imagine the humongous effect, multiple effects of that? As the living conditions of the people improve, society reflects the changes and is better positioned to embrace reforms. The northeastern axis of Nigeria is one of several geopolitical zones where government is rebuilding not just physical structures alone, but also the psyche of the people. Years of insecurity occasioned by persistent attacks by the terrorist group Boko Haram has displaced hundreds of thousands with many killed and survivors restless. Since relocating the command center of the war to Meduguri, President Mohamed Buhari has strongly supported the military with funding and other logistics to stop the insurgency. We're satisfied with keeping Nigeria intact, with maintaining her integrity, uh, on territorial integrity, uh, despite uh, the challenges. Um, satisfied that uh, the Nigerian army is more professional than ever before. I'm satisfied that um, we've uh, kept to our constitutional imperatives. Um, we've uh, kept uh, the promise to keep Nigeria as a united and indivisible uh, country. Um, we have also kept the promise to our troops to keep to uh, the promise that uh, their welfare is uppermost, their morale at all times is maintained to be very high. I'm happy with the training that has been achieved over the years uh, since my assumption of office as chief of army staff. We've never had any training this intensive and this uh, number of SI that we've had. Blasting and evergreen, most of the projects embarked upon by the Buhari administration are indeed legacy ventures. It isn't just that they are promises made and kept, they ain't 
are the prospect of better times in Nigeria where the system works for the greater good. Issues in the sports sector remain one of the most debated among Nigerians due to the passion, followership, government involvement, impact on Nigeria's external image and our national life in the sports parliament. The NTA offers Nigerians deep views on issues with experts in the sports sector offering in-depth analysis, hindsight, insight and foresight towards elevating Nigerian sports to the zenith on the floor of the sports parliament. Sports Parliament, a unique platform for sports discussions showing live on the NTA. Keep a day with the parliamentarians. Your eyes have it. For anyone who values financial security and ultimately desires financial freedom, creating at least one additional stream is no longer a luxury, it has become a necessity. Diversifying your income stream is crucial to protect yourself and your family against the unavoidable ups and downs of economic and industry cycles. Because of the financial risk that come from relying on one source of income, such as a job or a business, consider creating at least one or more additional streams to generate cash flow. The benefits of having multiple streams of income include peace of mind because you know there will always be money to spend. Also, you will earn much more than you currently earn from your day's job. Therefore, you will live bigger and better. Your additional income streams can be active, passive or a combination of the two. Some may pay you for doing something that you love, active, while others can provide income for you without having to do much of anything at all passive. Here are multiple streams of income opportunities. Selling information in hard book formats, selling information in the form of downloadable ebooks, making money from referral opportunities, training classes, consulting opportunities, dealership opportunities, design opportunities, manufacturing opportunities, investment opportunities. The list is definitely not exhaustible. To create wealth, you must make investment that will create dependable streams of income flows, independent of your main source of income. The time to act is now. Begin implementing this practice and before you know it, within months, you can be enjoying the benefits and the financial security and freedom that comes from having multiple streams of income. NTA, you can't be Deutsch. This is the network service of the NTA. Alaji Lai Mohammed is hereby confirmed as a minister of the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Hey, bro. 